All right. Let's start with Alejandro in Louisiana. Hello. How are you? Hey, I'm hello. Alejandro. I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, don't do How's that to me. Are you in uh, Los Angeles? I'm in Los Angeles, yes. God damn it. Okay. It says LA. Oh, fine. Hi, Alejandro. <laughs> what do you yes. want to talk about? <laughs> How's it going today? I'm warm, gratefully, and I've got yes. some nice boiled water here, so I'm happy for that. melting. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? I'm glad. We can come. Well, um, I've had conversations with a lot of new atheists, and before I really get rolling, I wanted to find things. Classic atheists I describe as people who believe there is no God. That's a classic atheist. Okay. New atheism might really trace back to about 2005, and those are the ones who lack a belief in God. And I was wondering if there's any way we could really discern whether new atheists were more of a condition than an argument. The idea well, being, is there something specific about them that makes them think differently? Sure. I mean, I can tell you for myself, I can't speak for everybody. And, and the, the, the interesting thing about labels is they're they're changing and we we need to recognize that you know as language changes you know the our usage of it changes but um yeah. at least for me i would tell you that the reason i wouldn't say that no gods exist is because yeah. the definition of god is so incredibly fluid that someone could define a very benign god into existence I, I you know i could say god is this pen that i'm holding it doesn't i i mean i i can't deny the existence of this pen i'm i'm, I'm holding it you know um so I, I don't see a whole lot of use in a blanket there are no gods i think i have to wait until i hear what the claim is that way i can listen and judge whether or not you know i think that that god exists depending on the claim that's why it, 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 well, it, 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 it's really informed by yeah. wanting to make sure that we're listening and not talking at you. It's also a course, case of, of if you have a Venn diagram, all the people mm -hmm. who actively disbelieve in who actively, you know, disbelieve in gods are contained inside the mm -hmm. larger circle of people who lack belief. So the, the new atheist definition is more inclusive yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. It, it, it's it's more a subset than it is a separate entity. And what did you call those people who lacked belief before there were new atheists? Well, uh, they didn't really exist. I mean, it wasn't really an idea. <laughs> sure they the did. closest I've found, well, the, the closest I, I've found is autistic, really. Well, I, I, I think that uh, we might be able to, to, to shatter that one right now. Dennis, did you exist before 2005? Yes. I mean, uh, there's nothing. Uh, I mean, I have to assume people said, I don't believe you way back in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thousands of years ago, they must have said, I don't believe you. That's all lacking belief well, is. You say, I, I don't believe what you just said. Yeah. Well, I mean, getting back to my point, sure. um, the idea is they didn't re weren't really a movement. Prior to 2005, yeah. roughly speaking, uh, atheists that I spoke to on a regular basis were, there is no God, and these are the reasons I believe there is no God. Okay. As opposed to the you know people who post-2005 who simply say, I lack of belief, I'm unconvinced, and yeah. their way of argument, exactly what you said about defining God. You know, there's this, uh, there's this difficulty with definitions. How do we define things? I mean, sure. uh, so let's, my let's, favorite example is... Well, hold on just a second. I, I just want to make sure that we're, we're, we're on the same page. Is this call more to talk about the rhetoric around it? Or is this call to talk about kind of what you believe and why? Like, I, I just want to make sure that I know where we're going with this call. Well, I, before we before we really approach the problem, I want to understand if we can actually discuss it. And for example, you said you had a problem defining what God is. Now, that's a good example because definitions I've found that atheists have a problem with. They want to, new atheists, excuse me. 
uh, have a problem with. They want to define everything empirically rather than abstractly. For example, one of the uh, simple tests that uh, gets tossed around is, is there such a thing as the tallest tree? Yeah. Does Is there a tallest tree? Would you say, yes, there is a tallest tree? Okay. Sure. Why not? Well, okay. All right. So based on the fact that there is a tallest tree, can we conclude that there is no tree taller than that tallest tree? Yeah, it's, it's by definition. Okay. Are, 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 you, are you moving we're, into the ontological argument? We're, we're being led down well, some yeah. sort of, of path here. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, that's, that's the thing. A lot of the new atheists that I've talked to are very, very... Uh, oh, you're, you're, you're talking to us right now. Hard, uh, okay. Go, so go at any rate, if, we can, if you ask for a definition of God, and very simply, of course, God is defined by the classic argument. God is the first cause. You know, God, God is, created the cosmos. God is defined by you as that. You can't that's speak the for the argument. Right. I, and, and as you're presenting it, make sure that you're not speaking for everyone in existence because lots of people have definitions for God that are not yours, which is why we put that caveat out there. So if you're presenting your evidence for the God that you believe in, I'm glad that you are giving it the attributes that you believe that it has. I just want to make sure that when you're going through this, that you're, you understand that we're listening to Alejandro. And Alejandro is not every theist because there are lots of claims about deities, right? Right. Okay. So we're starting with things that we can all agree on. Okay. Do you agree that there is a first cause? No. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. And you don't know why? Why? No, I don't know why. Yeah, why I'm why okay you, with not why, knowing. Why would you suppose there's what? I I I, I didn't say so. So you're tr I think you're trying to pin me on this idea that I'm saying there is no first cause. Uh, all I'm saying is I don't know. Right. I, I I'm I'm happy to listen to you know people who spend their lives you know looking into cosmology and and scientists who study you know how, how the the universe but i'm definitely just a lay person and so for me to claim that i have right. knowledge like that I, I i couldn't so my best answer is i don't know well the, the problem is i don't know is automatically the wrong answer no why oh, it, what i don't know. no hold on, I am, hold on hold on i am accurately reporting our state of knowledge our state of knowledge is we okay. don't know Anything else is a lie. Okay. And, 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 and really quick, before, before we keep going down this thread, I do want to just make sure that I, I call this out. Um, I've worked in special ed for many, many years. Um, and the way you used the word autistic was, was not okay. Mm -hmm. So if you can refrain from doing that okay. in the future, that'll make sure that you can stay on this call, okay? Sure. Okay. Cool. All right. All right go ahead. So let's explore whether I don't know can be the right answer. Um, let's pretend it is. Marble. I'm the only person who knows what's in my head, and yeah. I know I don't know. I, I, you I, have I, to well, take that. The, or the, well, you well, have to accept that, that answer. You don't know. I, you don't know. That's not part of reality. Let's, uh, let's, uh, yes, it, it is. is. My brain does not contain the knowledge of where the universe came from. Okay. Let's look at this example, okay? There's, Hold let's on. Imagine there's a jar. Hold on, Alejandro. Do you head. agree with me? Yes. That you don't that that There's my no, brain no. does not contain knowledge of where the universe came from. Well, if your brain does not contain knowledge of where the universe came from, on what grounds do you reject my answer? Uh, no, I'm not. I don't reject your answer. I'm saying I, I, do. I don't know. I, I, I do reject your answer, uh, Alejandro. I do reject your answer. Um, Just because I don't know doesn't mean that you okay. do. Yeah. You're making the claim, and when you make the claim, you need to back it up. See, mm -hmm. I, I think the problem that we're having here is Dennis is speaking about himself. Alejandro, you're speaking ontologically whether or not we exist. There is an answer. But to say that you have that answer, you need to provide evidence for it. So you're going to use the gumball analogy, which is fantastic. I know another analogy. Have you heard of phlogiston? Mm -hmm. Phlogiston, yes. That was the substance in space, kind of like ether. Right. And so 
phlogiston was thought to be what causes fire, mm -hmm. right? And so something that was burned was considered mm -hmm. deflogenated, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so scientists spent a long time trying to isolate phlogiston and ether is another great example. Yeah. Also, the humors, mm -hmm. right? And the humors being what mm -hmm. causes health issues. All of those were people who said that they had the answer and they went out to try and assert and, and, and find proof of that answer and they couldn't, right? And instead, it took us learning and studying and following the evidence where it took us to get to our current understanding of, of, of physics and of medicine. And so I think that is a great example of why I would advise against making a claim about the beginning of the universe unless you have a good reason to. So, what is your good reason? Well, I'm going over that with you. Okay. We okay. can imagine a jar of marbles on your desk, okay? Gumballs, right. whatever you want to do, okay? Sure. Now, there's, there's either an odd number of marbles or, or there's an number. odd number of marbles. Would you? Yes, even or odd. Would you agree right. that yeah. if there's and, a jar of marbles on your desk, yes. the number is Alejandro. Odd yeah, it has either. to be. Yeah, and then Alejandro, if you were to okay. ask Dennis and I, um, you know, if you were to say, if Dennis were to say the number of uh, marbles is odd and Dennis knows that for a fact, mm -hmm. do I accept Dennis's claim? And I say, no, I don't accept it. That doesn't mean that I think it's even. Uh, this is another example of what we just went over. Right. And, and, and that is that right. withholding your, your, your answer until you count the damn marbles is important. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the point is, you saying you don't know is mm -hmm. not the right answer. What do you mean it's, it's, it's not the know, right it's, answer? It's, answer. It's, it's not odd or even. It, it's, it's, if the answer is odd or the answer is even, then among the answers, right. I don't know, is not a extant answer to what we're going to get when we get to the bottom of the, when, when we actually count the marbles. Uh, so yes, understood, marble, Alejandro. Will not be, yes, Alejandro. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. Yeah. No, it does mean no. it's no. wrong. No, no, it's, it's, it's an wrong. absolutely truthful statement. Yeah, the the the, the statement is about okay. our knowledge, not the ontological fact. Right. You're asking us what okay. we understand, okay. what we know, and what we're willing to accept. Right. You're asking you're, you're, me about the contents of my brain, and I'm telling you what the contents of my brain are. You're, you're, you're conflating two different things, Alejandro, an ontological yeah. argument about what exists outside of us, whether, you know, what happens when you count all the marbles, and the other is our knowledge, our understanding based on, on, on how we've come to learn about the universe, that it has everything to do with us. Do you understand those two, different, those two sides of it? Well, now you're arguing that, athe that atheism is a belief and has nothing to do with reality. No. Okay. Atheism is not a belief. Yes. Yeah. We're not presenting it, it, another different it, it, thing. And, 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 and also, You're presenting a God. We're not presenting anything. And, and, and also, if that's how you want to, well, if you want to define belief that way, fine. I really don't give a fuck. Um, I, I, I want to get to what you believe and why, and why you're trying to shirk the burden of evidence that you need to provide in order to justify your belief. Well, well I'm getting to that, but first we're having to have discussion about the discussion. Uh, so we're done with I'm that. Sorry, we're Get not to on your it. script, but yeah, we're we're, we're, we're have to well into the call. Our answers. Yeah, we're well into the call. Either you're going to get into it, or we're going to move on to the next call. Okay. Well, like I said, you wanted to move to the definition of God. God is the first cause. Okay. So okay. Why does there have to be a first cause? First cause. Okay. Why does the, because everything everything what made the God cause is contingent on the first cause. What, so, what made the God? Yeah. That's well, I, no, Dennis. I, that, that, that's like saying there's something a tree taller than the tallest tree. No, so it's it's no. reducto ad absurdum. No, it, it's there's it's nothing. Reducto, I, I'm sorry. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with an infinite regress. We can have an infinite regress. Everything has a cause. So if God needs a God, the God's God needs a God, just turtles the whole way down. That's a possibility. Um, no, you're arguing the Sure, universe. that's a possibility. Yeah, I, I mean, have you considered... We don't know. That we, it, uh, 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 so with that whole uncaused cause, have you experienced an uncaused cause before? 
Now, that's the you, experiential argument. We're pivoting to whether I've experienced God. That's a different can you can you point to one that you weren't there or you didn't experience? Can you can you please show me what I have to compare your answer to when it comes to the beginning of the universe to because right now all it is is a special exception. All it is is according to that argument, right? Everything has a cause except for my special thing that doesn't need to follow the rules. Right. You create a rule and then immediately break it. I mean, it's not my fault that your argument sucks, dude. No, I just I just made that point with the tallest tree. There's a tallest tree, there's the deepest ocean, there's the biggest rock. That has nothing to do with anything. No, how are those the same? No, yeah. that's exactly the point. We can we know there's no for the first cause means that's like the tallest tree or the deepest ocean. There's, no, no. It's the first uh, I I see no relationship. Okay. Uh when I say there's a tallest tree, we agree there's a yeah. tallest tree. Yeah. Right? And sure. there's no tree taller than the tallest tree. Sure. Otherwise, we see causality, okay? So everything gets caused by something else. And eventually there is a first cause, just like there is a tallest tree and there okay. is... Oh, nope. Okay. It, 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 it sounds like you're waiting to tell us the thing that we've already been responding to you about, Alondro. So if, if you want to go on with the first cause, I get it. Um, the answer here is, I'm sorry if it sounds unsatisfactory to you, but I don't know. I don't know. To get a little further into it, why do you know? So even if I were to grant you, okay, cool, there's a first yeah. mover, just so we could grant it. Who's sure. to say that first mover didn't blow itself up in the process? Does that have anything, does that say anything about the God that you believe in? Well, yes, it's maximally great. No, why do you say that? Yeah. There Who told you that? Any act greater than creating everything from nothing. Ergo, God is maximally great. Okay. Wow. Okay, so now you're just so, defining it into existence. It, Damn. Yes, and, and, that's and impressive. Also, also uh, Alejandro, can you hold greatness? Yeah. You can? Can I hold greatness? Yes. No. Can you touch it? Uh, well, I can't exactly smell yellow either, so I don't know where. Exactly. Because it's not a noun. Oh, so you're arguing that abstract things don't exist. That I'm, I'm arguing, Alejandro, that abstract concepts like descriptors are things that we use to describe nouns, that we describe things. If you're pointing to a descriptor and trying to treat it like a noun, you're using words wrong. Because right. I, what is the wettest thing? Well, I don't. What know. is the twoest thing? That's the wettest. Ah, hmm? very good point. Very, very good point. You're arguing it has to describe something. So it's like one seed, uh, two books, three cantaloupes. Right. The now, let's see. Like, How about one Daffy Duck like, plus one Daffy Duck? That equals two Daffy Ducks. Does that mean two Daffy Ducks exist in the universe? No, because that's our universe. Because right. I just added two Daffy Ducks. They don't. I don't think you're going to argue with me that I'm wrong about that. What we that shows, yeah, what that shows is just because you can point and use point to and use those abstract concepts does not mean that they exist in the world. They're adjectives. That's all they are. And so you need to divorce the adjective from the noun if you're talking about a noun. If you're talking about smelliness existing as as some platonic ideal then no, that's not how that works. Well, then we don't have anything as logic. You, you, you just set the board on fire. Well, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just set the board on fire because you don't get to make your point. Please explain. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm, I will be happy to. Okay, so greatness is like... An adjective. An, so it's an abstract idea. Right. Right. It exists in our heads. A great boxer or a great car or a great idea or a great book or a great uh, sure. pool. Uh, the great is a concept in and of itself, and we separate that out kind of the same way we say there's one book, there's two cars, there's three cameras. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Or four boxes. So we separate the concept out, and that's where we have 
and pure abstraction. Okay, and and just j- just so you're aware, I don't want you to think that I'm I'm trying to dive. I want you to know I have an eye on the clock. It's been 25 minutes, and so I want to make sure that we can get to get to it. So you've been you've been leading us by the nose. I want to make sure you have time to make your point. I. Well, like I said, we asked about the definition of God. We've got mm-hmm. the cause, and the first cause is maximally great. That's well, the description. Where, where did this maximally great thing come from? It exists in necessity. It can mm-hmm. not. Why? Uh, 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 it is contingent on it. Great no. is a, <laughs> is yeah, a you... judgment call. There's no... Exactly. I, I, I can think... There's no intrinsic quality of greatness agreed I, I can think that my car is great that doesn't mean that other people are necessarily going to agree i can have a friend that i think is great that doesn't mean that there are people who who disagree but that that said it, it it sounds like you are using adjectives instead of nouns um and if you say it can't exist because it has to exist and because it has to exist it can't not exist you've Worked your way into a circle, and I can't get you out of that circadian. That circadian. <laughs> that oh, yeah. circular. Cir- I can, yeah. Can there not? Can there? Let me ask you another way. Can there not be a tall yeah. tree? So you're that that you're again assuming that trees exist, and I'm granting that. I'm not granting gods exist, and because of that, pointing to the adjective of the trees is apples and oranges with gods because you don't have any gods to show me. And so I can't tell you what the least great God is compared to the most great God. You have to show that they exist at all before you can make that judgment. Okay, well... I hope that helps. But if you have more you want to talk about, feel free to call in. If you want to talk to other people about that specific subject, feel free to join our Discord because we have a ton of really, really awesome people who would probably love to talk to you too. Okay, well, it's been fun talking to you. Good to talk to you, too. Take care, Alejandro. That was interesting. How do you feel about that, man? (laughs) Uh, It's We weren't on his script. No. We we kept... uh, I suspect he he read this argument somewhere and thought he would just lead us down the the path and we'd be forced to agree with him on all his premises and stuff like that. And no, it, it... uh, plans do not survive contact with the enemy. Neither do arguments. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, it's it's not my fault that he's trying to, um, you know, define adjectives as nouns. And the idea that abstract concepts can't exist unless there's this, it, because that, that that's what it's implying. You know, Plato yeah. had this, this whole idea that there's this invisible platonic realm and uh, in the platonic realm, there's the perfect each thing, there's the perfect apple and all apples in existence are really drawing their appleness from the perfect apple. Right. Right. And, and so when he's talking about these adjectives, he's treating them as if they're nouns in the platonic realm. And it just, doesn't stand up. It doesn't make sense. I don't believe in Platonism. Yeah. And, this, and I definitely don't believe that that is a convincing argument. All, all it does is make people go, wow. And the yeah, reason it does that is because we don't talk about it enough. And especially in English, we use adjectives as nouns, right? Yeah. And this was a weird construction of the argument. It, it Suddenly this maximally great thing gets pasted in. It was really weird. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's that it's that belongs to a different argument <laughs> I, I i it it does it sounds like he he's working through the ontological argument though yeah and um it, it is interesting and it is a good point that he brought up that there's a difference between our knowledge and what actually exists and what we yeah. do is we, we compare what we understand to be true about the world to the world and if 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 it bears out that that what we understand about the world is reflected in the world, then okay, that is a true thing. Right. Um, I mean, if he said, okay, the there's true, there's a can... greatest, there's a tallest tree. Okay, is there a most advanced species? Yeah. Uh, let's not. let's ignore how evolution does not say advanced, but go okay, sure. But then when you, you know, because, but then when you say God or cause, we, we don't know. 
Yeah. We have no idea. Agreed. Uh, how is one cause better than another, greater than another? It's it's just weird. It is. Um, and we we had a couple really, really good people call out in the live chat. And I want to make sure that I oh yeah, that I point out that um that was a presuppositional argument as well. Yes. He, was, he was presupposing that, that God existed and that God existed and it had to exist and it could not exist. And well those so, guys those guys like to tell you what's in your own head. And unfortunately I really hate that. Me too. <laughs> 